Hi everybody, it's Amy from Winterwood Studio and it is a fun day. Uh, you can see the packages here from Timu. This is a watercolor based uh, art haul from Timu um, and it is super fun. There's a bunch of new things in here I haven't tried and I'm really excited to look at everything. So grab yourself something cozy, come on in and let's see, see what's inside here. Okay, so welcome to another video I am filming before my surgery. By the time this goes up, I will for sure have had my surgery. Um, hopefully I'm doing well. <laughs> um, so today we have a art supply haul from Timu. Uh, there is one more package coming. So these two packages right here, this one and this one, um, were the packages, you know, from them for this video. This one here was one that I ordered on my own. Different address, different name, different account. So uh, we're gonna compare that. I did that in my first video, which uh, I can link. I have a, several Timu Art Hall videos. Um, they're all at the end of this video. There's a link to the playlist for it, but I can put it down below too. Um, so we will compare their packaging and stuff with this. Uh, I placed my order on the exact same day that they I sent in my choices to them. And these three came at the same time. I will say I did have another package in my personal order that is not here yet. It looks like it's supposed to be here tomorrow. So uh, two days later than these two, assuming it comes tomorrow. Um, and I will tap that on at the end of this video and show you what's in there too. It's all art supplies. Actually, this stuff is all like mostly watercolor related, but this has a few things that aren't watercolor related, but still art supplies, and so does the other one that's coming. If you don't know what Timu is, it is a very fun online shopping place where you can get everything you want from like home goods to clothes to jewelry to art supplies to cleaning supplies. It's basically got everything you could want, and the prices are very cheap because uh, you're buying directly from the manufacturers and the middleman is cut out. Um, if you are concerned about artists designs being stolen uh, I will link the video with all my information on how to report that um, from the last time I talked to Timu they gave us a special email address they're trying to take that down they want you to report it so they can try to take it down um, and then uh, in my last video I went over all the uh, the forced labor stuff that people the rumors that are going around um, all of that is in the last video I made that'll be linked down below if you want to check that out um, Let's open this stuff and see what's inside. All right, we'll start with the stuff from, the sponsored stuff from them. Before we open it, let's take a look at the packaging. So this is the packaging from, for specifically for this video, um, package one. And, oh, there, that's my scissors. The packaging for package two. And then this is package number one of my own personal order. The same bags, the same tape, um, they both have a couple little holes in them. No big deal. Um, so let's start with opening what's in here. All the items will be linked down below as well as my special coupon code. So make sure you check that out. Okay, I had to run and check. I have a $100 coupon bundle for you guys. The code for that will be down below and maybe I'll pop it up here too as well so that you can save some money when you buy your stuff. Um, and then also, I also want to point out everybody, so I had uh, people saying that they had a hard time seeing when I open stuff and hold it up. I unbox everything and briefly hold it up, but then I move you from here to here and we swatch stuff and we make art and I show you everything up close. So. Uh, if you want to see that, that comes later in the video. And let's open this and see what's in here. <laughs> okay, so the first thing is a paintbrush set. These are pretty. Look at, they're a pretty mint green. Mint green with uh, nylon bristles. I believe these are nylon bristles from Lonely Finger. Um, we will be testing these shortly. They look like they're in pretty good shape. Maybe this top one got bent a little. We'll have to check it out and see. We will check it out and see. And then we have, I'm not sure what all is in here. I've mentioned before, I give them a list of stuff that I would like to see, and then they pick from that, but sometimes stuff is sold out or they just have other stuff they'd like me to take a look at and they, you know, send me whatever they feel like. <laughs> Ooh. Sorry, I got excited. This is one of the things I was really hoping that uh, we would be able to test out. 
Um, I really love art supplies. <laughs> Uh, when, when I get to open new art supplies, it's like one of my happiest things. <laughs> and using new art supplies and making art, it's really, okay, so this came in a nice padded. It's very well taken care of. These are water-soluble wax pastels. Um, I would imagine very similar to Neo Color 2s. Ooh, you guys, look at that. Look at, there's a little mixing palette. Oh, this is so nice, you guys. <laughs> look, look, there's... 12 colors? Is there 12? 4, 4, 4. 12, and there's a little water brush and a sharpener. I can't wait to try these. I think these are going to be super fun. Um, I think these were $9, so obviously much, much cheaper than the Neo Color 2s. I can never remember the prices because I'm terrible at that, so I'll pop them up like I always do um, because I know people are interested in knowing the price, and I have a bad memory. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then everything will be linked down below too. I think I already said that. All right, next thing. This is another really fun thing. <laughs> it is, I can't get it out of the package. The five color starry color glittery watercolor set. And let's just slide this out here. Ooh, <laughs> very pretty. And I do know there is a lot of glare from the ring lights. Um, I do not have a lot of money. And I have not been able to upgrade my lights yet, you guys. So sorry about that. Um, we have to make do with what, you know, what we have. Um, which is another good reason to shop at Timu because their prices are so cheap. Um, and I do know that people, you know, everybody's got their own um, budgets, you know. And not everybody can shop. I got that comment actually a lot on my last video saying that people should just shop at Michael's or whatever, um, or Joann's. I think I want to switch to this for a second because I want to show some of those things last. Um, you guys, the closest Michael's to me is almost a three hour drive and the closest Joann's to me is four and a half hours. Uh, the only store in my, I live in the middle of the no, of nowhere, the only store that's close to me is Walmart. So my only options other than ordering stuff is going to Walmart. Um, I don't have the option of going to other places and I know a lot of other people don't either. Um, and on top of that, you know, they can be pretty pricey and not everybody has the money to shop at those big places. And it, that's one of the things that bothers me when people leave comments like that because I don't want to go off on it, but you know... Having enough money to be able to choose and pick where you shop is a privilege and, you know, you should be... I don't want to open that yet either. <laughs> There's too many exciting things, you guys. Um, let's see. What's this? All right. <laughs> Here, we'll start with this. Um, these are... Ooh, these look pretty. Some fine liner brushes. I don't know how well you can see that. Fine liner brushes right there. Um, I forgot what I was saying. I was probably going off on a rant anyway. It's probably not important. All right, let's see what's in this. I'm not sure if I know what's in this one. Okay, let's do this. And here we have, these are supposed to be waterproof pigment liners. So like your Pigma Micron, something like that. Um, and we will be testing these and seeing if they are actually waterproof. And I'll just open this up a little bit and take them out so you can see. There they are, very pretty. They come in a range of sizes from 0.05 all the way up to 0.8, plus there's a brush. Miss Dita is giving her a drink of water over there. She's just nonstop drinking. <laughs> so all the little clicking is her. Maybe she wants to say hi. I'll get her. Little Miss Dita says, hello. She says, hello, it's nice to see you. She says, I'm the cutest little thing in the world. She says, hello. This is Miss Farita. You've probably seen her before if you've been on my channel for a while. She's a very nice little girl. A very nice little girl. And she wants to get out and play, but she has to wait just a little bit longer before we can get out and play. I know. I know. So whenever you hear clicking in here, that's her. <laughs> that's her getting a drink of water and saying, let me out! <laughs> um, I'm not sure what's in here. Let's try this. I don't know what's in here. Let's see what's in here. A box. I don't know what's in here. Do I remember what? Oh, I know what this is. This is a ceramic palette. Very nice. I can't, I can't remember the prices, you guys. 
Um, I feel like these were like a dollar something. Um, and I feel like these might have been eight. I'm not sure. And then I think these were like five. I'll, again, I'll have all the prices, so I probably didn't need to just show you this. I feel like this palette might have been 11. Um, this is a very nice, larger size ceramic mixing palette. Um, basically, you could get set up and start watercoloring with everything that I picked out for today. Um, what is this? Okay. So now, let's go over here. And in this one, we have 48 watercolor pencils. 48 watercolor pencils. And I don't, I haven't used watercolor pencils a ton, uh, but a little bit. And it'll be super fun to check these out and see what we think of these. Um, it says right on the front here, not made with lead. So that's good. <laughs> um, anything else? Brilliant colors blend quickly. They look very pretty. 48 colors. So we'll check those out in a minute as well. And then if you've seen one of my Timu videos, you've probably seen these before already. But I was out and you can't really make a Timu watercolor haul without having these. So um, this is the Bahang Artist Watercolor Paper. Now they have the Bahang on in both artist and student grade. This is uh, the artist grade for their hot press. I wanted to try their student grade one, but every time I try, it's always sold out. Um, so I have used the hot press artist quality. It's a very good quality. Um, I believe $28 for this nine by 12 pad. Um, maybe it was 24, it'll pop up. Uh, so like a nine by 12 of arches with a, a block of 20 would be, you know, I think closer to 40, 46, I don't know. So it's 100% watercolor paper. And it is, this is, well, this brand of watercolor paper is actually what I recommend to people who want to try a 100% cotton watercolor paper, but they don't have enough money for like arches. And the mail truck is coming down. I gotta pause you for a minute. Okay. The mail truck is gone, the dog is done parking. Uh, if you've ever watched one of my live streams, you know that happens fairly often. <laughs> um, it is what it is. And then in here we have, I'm sure you probably already know, this is the Bahong Academy watercolor paper. This is their student grade. Um, but I actually think this is comparable to, if not better than the artist grade 100%. Um, wait, no, this is Academy. Nope, I'm wrong. No, I was right. Yeah, so the Academy is the artist grade and artist is, no. So Academy is student grade and the artist is the artist level. I have been using this grade and it performs pretty darn good. Um, I think this was $24. Um, I don't think you need to necessarily buy the artist grade uh, Bahang 100% watercolor paper. Um, there are, if you Google on here or if you search here on YouTube, um, the like comparisons between the Bahang Cold Pressed uh, Academy and the Bahang Cold Pressed Artist Grade, you will see that a lot of people actually like this better than the artist grade. I haven't done one of those videos yet. I should. I haven't. <laughs> um, but this is a very good, you know, not as expensive way to do a 100% cotton watercolor paper and it behaves like a 100% cotton watercolor paper and it's much cheaper than say arches. Okay, so then obviously to go with that, you need some watercolors. And this is the Marie's 24 set of watercolor tubes right there, if you can see them in there. And we will test all of these out and see. I was kind of hoping that these might have pigment numbers on them, but for the price, I wasn't sure if they would or not. Um, but we will see. I'm just going to pull one out here and see if it says on here. It does not. So we will test all these out um, and see what we think. If you wanted to use these for a finished piece, you would probably need to do some light fast. Oh, sorry, you guys, the, the color is really off. If you wanted to use these for a finished piece, you would probably need to do some light fast testing just to see how you felt about it um, if you were thinking of selling it. But for 
but for practice and in sketchbooks and um, stuff like that. It's okay, you could uh, also frame with UV glass. Not a perfect solution, but it helps. And then we have a, hang on, I'll take it out so you can see it. A pigment, uh, no, an acrylic marker in star gold. So that'll be fun to test, a lot of fun. And then, and then we have, I'm sorry if the color is going back and forth. Uh, I, I've said before, this camera is not great. The lens I think is going and I don't have the money to replace it right now, but hopefully soon. Can you guess what's in here? Look at you guys, this is a super cute. It is, whoops, the plastic came off that. See that? Unscrew this. A cute, adorable little set of travel watercolor brushes. Very nice. It'll be fun to check these out and in different sizes. So we will check these out and see what we think in just a second here. I'll put these back in the packaging for now. That's adorable. Super cute little travel set. And then the last thing I'm really excited about this one. This is, I was ridiculously excited about this one. So the last thing. Ta-da! This is the Bahong Academy Watercolor Sketchbook 100% Cotton in Hot Press. And they have this in Cold Press too if you'd rather have that. And I'm super excited to try this out. Um, hopefully after my sh shoulder heals up. I'm, my surgery, I have, uh, I tore two tendons in my rotator cuff. So I am going to have surgery. Um, and hopefully after it heals, I will be able to go out this summer and do some plain air painting like last summer and take you guys with me. If I can get the plastic off here. <laughs> so there it is. It's got a nice, beautiful cover. Uh, Acid-free, natural white, 6.2 inches by 9.4 inches, 140 pound paper and it's hot pressed so good for like pen and ink and wash wow is that nice it is very thick very thick very nice paper does it lay flat yep reasonably flat yeah very flat actually I don't know if you can see that see how flat it's laying it's on a slant now but very nice Ooh, this is gonna be so much I think I need the cold press one too <laughs> Very nice. Look at that, you guys. It's gorgeous. Okay. I cannot wait to try that. Now, the stuff in this bag here, like I said, different name, different address, different account. Um, different email address, different account. So I don't think, I know I know people think like the last time I said that, people said, oh, they probably have software up cross-referencing. Cross like my name, the two names aren't the same. The email address is not the same. I set up a different account, so it's possible they might notice that the the address is the same address, but I don't think that people have the time or the inclination or the software to do that. That's just my personal thought. Um, so we will see. So what all? I don't even... Okay, so the first thing I got is this little leaf. <laughs> this is for slicing a sheet of paper off your watercolor block. When I put you over there, I'll show you how to use this. This was like a dollar or something. Um, and it just slides in and you lift the paper off with it. Uh, not necessary, but cute. <laughs> Very pretty. Um, and I was using a butter knife and I didn't want to use a butter knife anymore. So I got this and then I got this packed nicely. Not just thrown in a bag but in a nice little bubble wrappy thing so this is a travel palette for taking watercolors with me I've been talking about setting up a transparent only watercolor palette no semi-opaque or opaque pigments in it um, so this is the palette I got to do that um, I have I have little uh, half pans already so I didn't need them um, but there you go um, you can order half pans to go with it on Timu I'm sure um, and then the last thing in this bag is this 
And this is, sorry you guys, my battery died there and I didn't notice right away. Uh, so I already took the plastic off this, but the last item in that bag is this little cold press watercolor sketchbook. Um, and it is, I have one of these already. I enjoy taking it out um, when I go plain air painting. It is very thick, very nice, uh, 140 pound, cold press, 100% watercolor paper. Um, I think it probably is 100% uh, cotton paper. It feels like 100% cotton paper. It behaves pretty nice. Um, and I really like these enough that I purchased a new one. It also comes with a little, I don't know if you can see that, a little pen holder there. So you're gonna attach a pen or a pencil. Um, so I, I'm i going to pop in the footage here of the last bag that's probably coming tomorrow, so two days later than everything else. Um, and I'll put that in now. <laughs> okay, you guys, so this is my last package from Timu, one of the ones I bought myself. I'm sorry I'm not on camera. I had a rough night last night, um, and I just couldn't put on my makeup and do my hair. So we're gonna open it, and also I didn't wanna move the camera and takes a lot of effort so um we're going to open this this way i guess and see what's in here again this is an order that i paid for myself and had it sent to a different address with a different account and a different or not a different address a different email account no i'm sorry i didn't sleep good last night i had this sent I used a different account with a different email address and a different name. Um, so this is how it came. You can see the package here. Looks like all the other packages. And there are several things in here. And we will open it up and see what's in here. So the first thing I got were these fine, fine liner brushes here. The sun is coming in. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and then... This is the last thing and the thing that I've been waiting for. This is supposedly <clears throat> a marker holder. And I'm hoping that it will be big enough to hold my... This is a really nice... This is a nice quality. Okay, there's three zippers, so let's see how this goes. So I guess each zipper opens a different compartment. It's supposed to hold 160, I think, markers. And I'm hoping that it's big enough to hold my Copic sketch and possibly even some Copic classics. So let's try it and see. Here's a sketch. Yeah, it has no problem holding the Copic sketch. And then... Oh, where's one of my classics? These classics are big honking things, so I don't know for sure if they will fit, but we will see what, what happens. I only have a couple classics. <clears throat> it does hold them, though. You have to wiggle it in a little bit, but it does hold them. So, and there we are. All right, so I think this was the last thing I had to do open, and we, here, let's open the other compartments, too, just so you can... See, it's really sturdy. Here's the middle compartment. Oh, oh, there's a carrying strap in here. Well, it was a good thing we opened it then. And then the last compartment here. Yeah, I'm really happy with the quality of this. Um, I could not find on anywhere on the local shopping one that was big enough to hold the Copic markers. Um, I found pencil ones, but not ones big enough to hold the Copic markers, so I'm really happy with this. I will be organizing my markers probably huh. later today. Let's hook this on so we have a carrying strap too. Okay, I'll move this stuff out of the way and we will go through all of the stuff uh, that I bought and test everything and swatch everything and then make some art. Okay, everybody, so here we are over at my desk with all of our new products from um, Timu. So let's take a closer look at some of these things here. Um, I think, first let's take a look at this sketchbook. So this is the Bahong Academy watercolor sketchbook, 100% cotton. This is the hot press, or it's supposed to be the hot press. It's got a little more texture than I would normally see in a hot press, but let's compare it to the 
hot press paper. So this is their um, their artist watercolor paper. This is not the Academy, which is supposed to be the professional, but the um, lower grade than that. But I the reason I got this one is I have tried their Academy, the professional one before, and I have heard that this is, I think this is, right? Oh no, wait, where are we at? Hang on a second. Never mind. This is the I was going to try their um their the academy is the non-professional and this is the professional grade. But I had heard that the non-professional was better than the professional and I was going to try it, but I forgot and ordered the regular. So this is their um professional grade hot press paper. So, let's see here. I have a cutter somewhere, but I don't know where it is. Let's just use our exacto knife to get the cover off. Just be real careful not to, Ooh. well, there you go. Once you get it started, <laughs> careful not to cut into the watercolor paper. So let's compare these. So actually, now that I look at it, this is the Academy in here. So that means that this is the non-professional paper versus the pro professional paper. And they look pretty similar to me. I think maybe there is a little bit more texture on here than on here. So this is good. I'll be able to compare the two different kinds of paper, um, which is good. Um, and then we've got the, um, um, this is the Academy. Everybody loves this paper. This is the um, cold press and this is the Academy level, which is the not professional, but again, people say it's better than the professional. So let's see if we can get this open. So at the time of filming this, uh, I filmed the box opening before my surgery and now I'm filming this after my surgery and so far after my surgery that I'm out of my brace and starting to move my arm a little bit. I think I'm eight weeks out, I think. So this is their cold press paper. And it's got, I think, Got a, yeah, it's got a cover sheet on it, so let's get this off. Just like we did with the hot press. I should really be using like a butter knife or something. So there is their cold press paper. It is very textured. It almost reminds me more of like the Arches Rough than the Arches Cold Press. It is pretty textured. Um, but that is a nice big pad and really pretty. Okay. So those are the papers and then we have the sketchbook. This is their cold press uh, watercolor paper sketchbook and I've had these before and enjoy them and got another one. Um, and then, let's see, watercolors. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do now is move everything that I don't wanna swatch off the desk. We'll pick one of the um, brush sets to try and we will swatch uh, some of these different supplies in probably not the sketchbook. We'll just use a regular mixed media paper because I don't want to waste the sketchbook. Um, so I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so let's open up to a fresh page here. This has sort of become my swatching sketchbook. Um, let's start with, I guess, the watercolors. Let's start with this little pack of the Starry Night watercolors. Actually, let's wet these. And then we'll come back to them in a minute. So they come in a nice little case here. They slide out. Um, let's wet them. Wet, wet, wet. Wet, wet, wet. Wet, 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 wet. Okay. Now, while we wait for those to activate, actually, we could try a couple of these pigment liners and make some swatches to let dry so that we can make sure um, they are waterproof. So let's start by writing Timu Water Color Hall. And then I'm just going to do some lines with a couple of the different sizes here. Ooh, a brush pen. Didn't realize there was one in the set. 
Um, let's see what's this. This is just their bigger. Okay. So let that dry. Because we want to make sure it is waterproof. There. And then while we're waiting for that, I'm really excited to try these. Obviously, I'm hoping they're going to be like a certain brand. I won't say which. I'm sure you all know. Look, it's got a little nice palette in here and a little travel brush. Let's start just by swatching. First, I want to see how they perform as crayons. And you won't be able to see the white very well, but there's white there. We'll leave this and then we'll wet that, that swatch and see how it does. So here's the, the yellow. Um, this, they do feel so far very similar to certain other brands. They even look like at the wrapper somewhat. Okay. They feel pretty creamy and soft and nice. I wonder if they smudge a little bit, not too bad. The other brand will smudge a little bit too, but not too bad. These maybe smudge a little bit more than the other brand. And obviously, uh, I have no idea if these are light fast. I do not think they are light fast rated. Here, let me get my reading glasses and check just to see what's on here. It's in little letters. I cannot read it, so I don't know. <laughs> All right. And then the green. And then the dark green. I did not see any bigger sets of these. Let's see, there was a little paper that came with it. I don't know if they have. Bigger sets or not. I don't think so. Oh. There is, there's a 25 color metal box. I did not see that on there, but I'll have to look and see if it's on there. If, if I'd seen it, I would have got that, I think, instead of the 12, but this is a good set for trying. And the purple. Brown. And then I think before we swatch these, I'm gonna go back to the metallic watercolors and see how they are. Let's try those first, see if they're all wet. Okay. Oh, whoops, <laughs> it's putting it over the white. <laughs> There's the clear, and then here's the lightest gold. And We'll do this yellowy gold color. Ooh, creamy. And the one below it. Okay. And then we'll put the last two on the side up here. One. And two. All right, now these are obviously still wet. Very pretty, very metallic. This one especially is very metallic. All right, now, I noticed when I was trying to put that clear over the white that it was resisting, which is not, well, this one activated pretty good. Add a little water and stretch that out. I'm not sure why it was resisting up there, but it was. Okay, I will say they don't dissolve quite as well as the certain higher end brand that I am thinking of that I know and love, but they do dissolve um, and activate nicely. And here is the pink. Now this pink doesn't want to activate as much as the other ones did. 
Okay, so that's interesting. The pink does not want to activate quite as much. Let's try the green. And these, of course, were a fraction of the price of the brand that I'm thinking of. So if you want to even just see if you like them, this might be a good way to test and see what you think before you invest in the very expensive brand that I'm thinking of. I think these, um, they do not activate quite as well as that brand, but I would not hesitate to buy these if I was just getting started out or if I wanted to try them and see if I even like them. Um, and also, like if you want to have some, you know, not as expensive ones like to take out with you in the woods or whatever, this would be a good choice. This brush feels really sturdy. I'm really enjoying this brush so far, by the way. That one activated really nice. Some of them seem to activate a little bit better than others, if that makes sense. Okay, so there are the water-soluble pastels. With a nice little mixing palette to take with you, which would be nice. Um, 40, I wonder if we can even, I didn't leave a lot of room. Let's try, we'll try. We'll try to get the 48 watercolor pencils on this page. Let's, where'd my little knife go? Okay. I'm gonna do my best to stay organized with these. <laughs> Oh, and while this is up here, let's check this. Okay, so after letting dry for like half an hour, these are not waterproof. I will let them dry a few more hours and come back and check them again. And we will just see what we think. Okay, so there's the white. And there's 48 colors. I will probably fast forward through this part. I'm probably not going to be able to fit them all on this page either. You guys, I'm interrupting just a, for a minute here to realize, I didn't realize this, but there is, if I can get it out, let's move that. There is a little brush in the corner here. Look at that, you guys. And it also says there is a pencil sharpener in here somewhere, probably down in the bottom there. There's a little brush in there. Okay, let's keep going with the swatching. Okay, so there are the colored pencils. They're not super soft and creamy. Um, let's see how they reactivate. My colors are sort of all running into each other. I may put them a little too close together, but they are all reactivating nicely. Uh, they do leave some graininess behind on the paper. Um, I have yet to find a watercolor pencil that doesn't do that a little bit. This maybe is a little bit more than others, but not too bad. Certainly good for a beginner level or for something you want to take out in the woods or something. Um, I haven't tried all the brands yet. Um, I have that one brand that everybody thinks I should try uh, that I haven't tried yet. So I can't compare it to those. Um, they seem to be activating pretty nice. They're pretty pale colors. Uh, if you're looking for brighter colors, the water-soluble pastels maybe are the better way to go. I think I'm thinking it might be fun to 
do a mixed media landscape type thing with all of the products together. I haven't done the watercolor, swatched the watercolors yet, so I'll have to do that and then we will see what I think. I think we'll let this dry for a few minutes though before I come back and we'll flip the page and swatch the Marie's watercolors on the next page. that came with it. It's pretty splayed out, but we can try it. Nope. <laughs> Not my cup of tea. That one's a metallic one. So is that one? That one didn't reactivate very well, though. Okay. Uh, just out of curiosity. Nope, still not waterproof. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll come back and we will swatch these Marie's watercolors. Okay, so these are dry. So now we're going to move on to swatching our watercolors. Um, actually, real quick before we do that, I'm gonna switch back to this page and just double check. It's been several hours now, like three or four. That helped a little bit, but I don't know. If you're gonna use these, I probably wouldn't, I would do the wash first and then the line. So, uh, they do say water resistant and not waterproof, but I wouldn't even call them water resistant. So, so far this is the only thing I've been not 100% excited about just because I thought they would be more water resistant than they were, but if you're doing just pen and ink or something like that, they'd be perfect. All right, so let's grab one that actually really is water resistant. Not that one. Um, and I'm just going to Draw a line because I want to see how opaque these colors are. Not the biggest lines, but that was the one that I had. Okay, let's get started. So just for fun, I'm assuming this is, you know, very similar to gouache. I'm going to take this little palette out of here for a second if I can get it. And I'm going to see how opaque it is if I mix it with a color. So let's put some down. And then, oh, I like, I like this color. We'll add a little of this and make a pretty pink and see how it turns out. Very nice and opaque, so that would work as a white gouache if you wanted it to. All right, I'm going to let this dry and then clear everything away and then see what I feel like making. Okay, so I've got the sketchbook out. I'm gonna be working this way. Um, this is a photo I took myself. This is gonna be my rough idea for this. I'm gonna shock everybody and do this in a completely different style than I normally do. I, if you are over on my Patreon and maybe here on YouTube, I don't know if it's up yet, but I've been dealing with some really bad artist block. 
um, like really bad, like the worst I've ever had. So I've been trying to work in a really loose style, almost sort of impressionistic or abstract, just totally different than what I would normally do to try to get myself out of it. So this may turn out awful. <laughs> It may just be like a sketchbook exercise, but this is what we're gonna do. So if you are over on Patreon, even just as a free member, you have access to this photo over there in case you wanna try to follow along <laughs> or uh, do your own super loose thing. So I'm just going to get started and I am going to move things around a little bit. Um, okay, I'm already too tight. I'm going to hold the pencil way back here. And this is our yard right when it was first becoming spring. Um, and this is our one of our plum trees. Um, and I'm going to just change things around a little bit. Now this is one of the watercolor pencils, so I am expecting it to dissolve a little bit and turn green um, obviously in the water when I put it in um, but that's the plan all right let's get get going here I grab my palette and let's just mix up some colors here Just a little orange over here. I'm gonna tone this blue down with a touch of orange. And then I'm going to start by just brushing this all over this paper here. This is going to be a full on mixed media painting, which means I'm gonna use everything that I've got here. I may even pull out the oil pastels I had from another video that I did with them just because. <laughs> Move this for a second. Okay, that is my first layer. I'm going to let that dry and I will be back. Actually, I just realized I do want to get some color in for the picnic table too before it dries too much. Um, I'm gonna do that, oops, with some of this brown here. Let's see, let's tone that down with a touch of the blue. Okay. tree trunk a little bit there as well even just loosening up that one side and let's come back over here and loosen a side here and over in here as well Ooh, too much water well, that'll be interesting to see what happens there. <laughs> Probably gonna bloom. All right. There we go. Okay. Now we really will let it dry and then I will be back. 
All right, this first layer of our loose uh, watercolory thing is done, and I think it's going to be time to start on the second layer. I think I'm going to do another layer of watercolor. Okay, you guys, so I just realized I accidentally deleted the reference photo I was working from, so we'll see how this goes, but I'm going to be working from memory as best I can. So, uh... Yeah, I think actually, I know I just said I'm going to start with watercolors, but I think I'm going to put in this picnic table and the tree trunk a little bit more with some of these watercolor pencils, <clears throat> and then we'll move back to watercolors. So even though I tried to keep this loose, I still feel like it ended up tighter than I wanted it to be. I am trying to learn the whole loose technique. I've never done it in my entire life. I've always been super detailed and realistic, as I'm sure you've probably seen on most uh, most all of my other videos uh especially with the picnic table like that's way too tight <laughs> I don't know um the supplies were all good I enjoyed using all the supplies uh the real star of the show I think were the brushes which were surprisingly good and the sketchbook was which was ex an excellent hot press watercolor sketchbook. I am super pleased with it and I can't wait to get their cold press version. Hopefully I can get one before it sells out. Um, so yeah this isn't my normal style. I am not sure how I feel about this style but again super pleased with the materials, the one thing that I maybe wasn't super excited about, well, not, I didn't like it, was the um, fine liners, which I specifically bought because on the site it did say that they were waterproof, and then I got them and they said water resistant on the package, and they were neither. Uh, they're still a good fine liner pen if you want to do like an ink drawing, um, but not waterproof. So, that was a little disappointing. Um, I wish I had bought those uh, water-soluble crayons in the bigger set. They, I really enjoyed them. I really, I'm, I have the expensive brand and I feel reluctant to use them because they were so expensive and these were absolutely glorious. <laughs> um, I wish I had bought the bigger set uh, maybe next time. Um, I like the how I had, like, I was trying to do, I don't know if you guys know about, like, lost and found edges in painting. It's, like, a more like a 202 type of composition class that you would take. Um, I was trying to do that a little bit here with the um, tree trunk, and I think I liked it better in the earlier stages. Um, I still sort of like it, but I sort of lost that. I was trying to do a lost edge on the right side, and I sort of lost it. Uh, but really enjoyed this plies. It was another fun video. Um, it was just uh, really helpful for my artist block to just sit down and have fun, and I can't wait to try them all again. Okay, so <clears throat> this is my very loose experiment in this sketchbook. If you've been around for a while, you know that I generally work in a very realistic, very tight, very detailed style such as this, which I just finished for my Patreons. Um, this is uh, my loose, fun, sketchy experiment where I just put colors on the page and had fun. And I did have fun, and these um, supplies were a lot of fun to use. Um, I would definitely, I am definitely planning to take these, like, out mixed media loose sketching at some point. Um, I'm not an expert by, at loose sketching by any means. Uh, if you want to see someone who's really good at it, I would recommend, oh, someone like Sandy Hester or Emily Powell or, um, I'm trying to think of other people off the top of my head who have a, a channel, um, even, I, yeah, those are the two I can, Emily Powell doesn't have a channel, but she's over on Instagram. Those are the two I can think of off the top of my head. I'm trying to get better at, um, working loose and big and fun and sketchy and bold because I haven't been enjoying my process lately. Um, and these supplies I think are going to be a ton of fun, uh, for taking out and working with, um, I had a lot of fun. Also, these brushes that I got, I definitely recommend. They're surprisingly good quality. Like, 
I'm really enjoying them. Like, I'm going to buy another set probably. Um, the palette was great. I don't know if you can see that there. The palette is great. I recommend that. These are a lot of fun and very similar to the uh, very expensive brand whose name I will not state. <laughs> um, but if you want to try like a set like these out before you purchase the very expensive brand just to see if you even like it or if you want... Um, just some basic colors to take out uh, plain air sketching. I definitely recommend that. The watercolor pencils were fun. The watercolor paints are fun. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this video as always. I always like doing videos with T for Timu. Their supplies always... Uh, very rarely do I find stuff that I'm not happy with. It happens every now and then, but very rarely. Um, and luckily today I was happy with everything I tried. So... Uh, I don't know how I feel about my loose painting. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out if I like the style or not, or if it's my style or not. Um, if you have any thoughts, do you work loose? Do you prefer realistic uh, and tight? How do you work? What do you, what do you prefer for other people? Like, what do you like to see? Um, put that down in the comments below, because I'd like to know. <laughs> Anyway, a big thank you to Timu for sponsoring this video. I enjoyed it very much. And until next time, happy creating!